Hello, and welcome to this Q&A for the radiograph of a family with Firoze Kosforani. The screening is part of the Nordic Baltic Oscar contenders at Scandinavia in New York, and the film is, being, is eligible for the best documentary feature and, and was awarded best feature length documentary at IDFA, the International Documentary Film Festival in Amsterdam. Radiograph of a Family is produced by Fabian Greenberg, Bard Koga Ronin for Antipode Films in Norway. Ms. Kosvarani graduated from the Academy de Bella Arte de Prea. After graduating in 2002, she returned to Iran and acquired her master's degree in journalism. She made her de debut as a filmmaker in 2004 with Life Train, a documentary on the play therapy provided by the traumatized children of Bam in the aftermath of a devastating earthquake. Since then, she has directed several documentaries and won several prizes at international film festivals, such as Oxfam Justice Award at IDFA, for her previous film festive duty. Moderating today is Teddy Gruya. He is the founding and director, the founder, director, and programmer for the American Documentary and Animation Film Festival, as well as the president of Cinematic Cinema Art Magics, a film production company based in Palm Springs, California. So please welcome Firoze and Teddy. Thank you very much for hosting us. Um, I'm pleased to be sitting here today, even though it's virtually about seven, 8,000 miles away, California to, <laughs> are you in Norway right now? Yeah, yeah I'm in Oslo, yeah. So uh, Ms. Kosravani, if I can call you Farutza, uh, that's great. Otherwise I'll call you by your last name. You just let me know. Kosravani. Okay. So this very special film, Radiographs of a Family, um, and, and once people see this work, hopefully a number of members from the Academy, hopefully the representatives that submit the documentary uh, um, admission for the uh, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences from Norway will send this film on, and then Academy members will vote on it. So we don't wanna spoil it with too much uh, as far as literal uh, discussion of what's in the film, but we'll skew around the edges because it's so fascinating, the story. And the film opens with a, a really quite special line of my, my mother fell in love with a photo of my father or first met my father through a photo. Perhaps you can give us a little background on that, Farusa, um, and then we can go from there. Yeah, um, it's my pleasure to talk with you about the film. Um, yes, the first sentences, sentence of the film is my mother married a picture of my father with a picture of, a, of my father. So um, it is um, not just metaphorically, it's literally uh, they did a distant marriage as uh, so and my mother married with a picture. And uh, I, I wanted to have this uh, absurd sentence at the opening of the film and uh, to explain later how come, what is the, um, why they did this kind of wedding. And then um, I wanted also to put a music which is a little bit melancholic for the wedding party that uh, you, uh, the audience can understand that there's something wrong in this uh, union. This, this arrangement, this union. Um, the, yeah. Um, we, we open up in, in uh, Geneva, Switzerland, um, where your father was an outstanding uh, medical student who's in a way becoming enculturated with the West. He came from Iran. Uh, I gather a family of means. This was not uncommon. Um, many people from Iran, particularly Tehran, uh, went to different universities and academies to study in the West, um, certainly before you know, November 1979. Um, but he still had an urge, uh, he's still connected, even though he's becoming cultured in the West, 
he still wants to have a connection with his past, with his own culture and language. Um, and that's where your mother comes in. How did they meet each other? Were they into, because there was no Tinder or match.com or anything back in those days. Uh, were they introduced by friends or, or family? How did that happen as far as literally, as you say, uh, via mail and photographs? Yeah, no, they met in Tehran once. Uh, just my father came back to Tehran for his uh, summer vacations and um, in a family gathering. So they were uh, very distant relatives. Um, um, so then uh, my father uh, thought that she is the best person and she will um, maybe uh, when she come to Switzerland, uh, she will uh, confront and uh, see the Western uh, lifestyle and uh, she will um, um, quit wearing hijab. And uh, so just the problem for him was that she is wearing the veil and she was wearing the veil. And she, uh, he, he thought that it's not a big problem. Um, so when my mother went to Switzerland, um, there, there, she was uh, felt really out of place, uh, not at her ease. And uh, she began to understand that is another world and she encountered scenes everywhere. And uh, so I wanted uh, in the first part of the film to understand both parts in the whole film, but uh, it uh, it's clear why my mother became revolutionary after. Yes, uh, as far as the storytelling, uh, uh, again, I don't want to spoil this for any Academy members that would be watching or people who want to buy the film, but we have to talk a little bit about it. So forgive us, I will say that uh, uh, I think you had a very um, um, interesting and in some ways exciting way of telling the story because you really didn't have much <clears throat> in the form of archival footage. There was no Super 8 footage. You had some photographs and then you weaved it uh, in and out uh, over the course of the film, uh, the story from both sides. <clears throat> My impression was that <clears throat> even though this is the daughter helping the story along you, the director. Um, I was impressed that it seemed very even handed, which is a challenge and it's entirely up to the director, but you didn't really take a side, you just explained the story, which was lovely. And in the sense, it also showed that in my, the way I felt is that you love both your parents equally. Um, th yes, this is what sure. came across to me. Um, yes. Yes, I tried to um, find a balance in, uh, and to be very fair and not to judge. Um, it's clear that my values are more close to my father, father's values, but uh, I have, um, I wanted, uh, I have, uh, a lot of respect for my mother's values. And so I tried uh, to be very fair and delicate and very, um, to understand both parts uh, and uh, like uh, how um, uh, to make empathy with them, with both of them. And uh, to uh, make understand also the reasons of my mother with care, with res very respectfully and uh, the tolerance of my father. So it's this thing, it's the way of tolerance in position from both parts. So, uh, and it's somehow a replacement of power under a roof in a house in Tehran. And it happens uh, as in the bigger reality outside home, has happened the same. So I found it very um, 
uh, a kind of uh, reflection of what is happening outside, inside home. And it was exactly fit to the both um, like before and after revolution. So I thought that my father represents exactly the way of life and the perspective, the reality, the ideology of good living of the of laicism of uh, and uh, in the second part is my mother's turn, which is the Islamic Republic values and the, all the uh, like uh, Islamic rules entered penetrated at home. So I wanted to describe a little bit how a revolution could happen in a house and Iranian revolution has happened in our house, like in all Iranians' house. <laughs> and it divided in two, uh, our family. So this is this consequence of any ideological revolutions that enter in the house and affected every corner of the domestic life. Yeah, that, that part of it uh, is actually quite brilliant because, and I've been told not to talk politics but okay socio-politically um you you've said it you know this is really a historical look as well at, at the schism that occurred uh inside your household your home and at the same time it was paralleled with all of iran um which is fascinating because of course we know about uh, some of the things that happened historically from the 50s on with influences within Iran uh, and, the, and the Shah and his, his intent and uh, interest in being closer to the West. And then of course, as you said, uh, the, the Islamic State's interest in getting back to what they supposedly were about, right? Which is what was represented with your mother, yeah, and and that was fascinating because she, as you said earlier, the music from the wedding was was quite melancholy. It was foreshadowing what was going to happen in this in this in this household. Uh, in spite of the love they had, they obviously had love because they had you, um, but they couldn't ignore. It se seems to me. Correct me if I'm wrong. That your father even though he was trying to influence her for good or for bad, however you want to define it by her being uh, in the West and Switzerland, that he still respected her, uh, that he still said, okay, well, you know, you're going to make your own decisions, even if he wasn't completely happy. Is that correct? Yeah, is it absolutely correct? Because he thought that at that time to make peace at home and, but, for the love of their daughter and um, so, uh, he had to uh, accept um, many uh, new regulations at home and outside home so since my mother is a was a representative of a system at home and uh, she tried to be um um, to also convince us to uh, uh, to this new establishment and the new orders, and um, Islam uh, became the order of the day at that time. And um, but my father is maintained her um, like uh, values, and um, so I was in between the two poles. And these poles were representative of two poles, polariza bipolarization of Iranian society, the same dichotomy that uh, existed from a long time ago and still exists. So uh, that was uh, a very, um, uh, like something that was between two poles, but a big tolerance of my father made it um, easier because uh, he was isolated, but he has lived his solitude in a very magnificent way. 
So he accepted with wisdom every uh, the new the, the new orders of the yeah did, of the did, system. Did, did your did your father after you know 1980? Did he would he have had the freedom to move about and go back to Switzerland? There's a reference in the film uh, about your going, I guess, to London or something, but about going back to Europe. Uh, would it have been that easy? Uh, obviously, he had connections, but could yeah. you have left that? Did you have that much freedom to leave Iran? Because you've, I'll, I'm curious. You've since said you associate a bit more on your father's side, and I know that you're not living in Iran now, but you still can go back and forth. Um, but what was that like back in the early '80s? Did he have the ability to take you if he wanted to to the to the West, or yeah, mm. okay. uh, the first years uh, after the uh, the revolution was a little bit hard to get the visa and get out of the country, but uh, after a few years, my father was invited in many radiograph radiology seminars in Europe. So um, always he went to Switzerland to his uh, second country uh, that he loves a lot. Um, and uh, after uh, many years, I went to Italy to study there. And, so. and you and you stayed, you studied in Italy, you did your undergraduate work there. And, um, and then I returned back to Iran for your master. And I'm working in, in Iran now, mm -hmm. working uh, mainly in Iran. All my ideas come from Iranian reality, Iranian contradictions, Iranian social life. And um, uh, on a more superficial level, but some people may be interested stylistically, um, were there any influences for you um, in writing and directing this film as far as how you presented it? Or do you feel this is really what you had to work with, but you did it in a creative way um, all on your own? You know what I'm asking? Um, were there other films that you've seen in the past that were reminiscent of this work? Or uh, again, you just were you. You knew that you had to tell the story. You wanted to honor your parents and their story, and you worked with what you had. Yeah, this was like a my lifetime project because I always wanted to do something with the Torah pictures of my Torah family, of the Torah history, of the Torah country. So I thought that uh, one day I will do something on the paintings that I did. Uh, around the missing piece, pieces of a picture. That was something that I wanted to do like with the same intention to make a film and looking for the missing parts of, of our past. So I knew um, that uh, this is very potentially very strong uh, to, to tell a story of what has happened. Um, because the act of uh, chewing up the pictures was very strong. And I thought it's, uh, since I was, uh, this came from my childhood memories to uh, paint around the, the Torah pictures. So um, I knew that I will make something with the pictures for film, but, it was very difficult. So uh, I really uh, experienced the deepest <laughs> challenges during the years of making this film. Um, lots of sufferances and also joy and pleasure to make it. But um, so I was uh, trying to make this film with the pictures, with the photos of our family album. And then, and it was a variety, like the arc of the history in it. So everything I can find. And it was amazing for me. They are all from an album of one family. This 
variety of the scenes and uh, from your situations. father from your father's side mm -hmm. yeah until the uh, yeah my mother is uh, when she gained this uh, identity professional and social and so uh, after the revolution i mean and then i wanted to extend the story to the story of others so i wanted to use the public um archives to tell my private story this is not just my story mm -hmm. so i thought that is uh, very good to find some also family archives of others of super eight images and then also official uh, archives from switzerland and iran and uh, then i wanted to add shooting scenes because i wanted to have fantasy in the film uh, and to make it something between fact and fiction so that is the house that i imagined and it was a uh, very uh, fit to be divided in two and to tell the story of a house how it also in the symmetrical structure of the uh, in the first half we have again in the second half first with my father and my father's friend in the second part with my mother's friend and so this is like the inversion of the or replacement of uh, roles yes that makes that makes sense um and there were a few things stylistically particularly at the end i want to spoil on people to see uh this super long uh, shot that you've created that threads from the beginning to the end other other individual uh, when did he pass away may i ask uh if we don't want to spoil it but oh. uh, in the in reality 14 years ago but yeah. in the reality of the film with the notion of time especially in the second part because it's not important when where and it's it could be in any time mm -hmm. i wanted to have this metaphorical um um like essence or a notion of the and the the families on both sides uh, have they been able to see the film yet and what sorts of reactions since uh you know as you were talking about there's there's these dichotomies in a lot of families or at least there used to be um what has been the reaction to this this lovely tribute you've done uh, i think um everyone could relate uh, to one of the uh, roles one of the pro uh, emblematic protagonists of the film so uh, i can say for the feedbacks still the public is split in two pro mother and pro father so even if i try to not judge but uh, the the viewers cannot not judge <laughs> it's uh, something that um anyway uh, there are all also people who can understand both both parts and uh, have empathy with uh, the both parts this is uh, what i i try to um this is my intention that uh, not give reason to one and not uh, to understand both um but it happened rarely people uh try to judge and it's more stronger for them because they can relate uh, with one of the parts and um the the iranians are always very concerned about the subject they can 
um, discuss about every details in terms of what has happened in our lives after the revolution and the effect that, uh, that how the revolution affected our relationships and in the Let's family talk about this publicly or more privately inside the home? more privately yeah. more privately or in social medias uh -huh. but uh, uh, i think uh, out of iran um they are more talking about also the structure, the aesthetic of the film, the style, the uh, visual style of the film. But uh, sometimes the subject is over cinema. It's something that is beyond uh, talking in a cinematographic terms. And I try to explain everything. This is a film. It's based on my childhood memories, my observations, my life experience. And it's not, uh, I'm just trying to make it so intimate, but also so universal. So uh, I knew that if you talk about the human feelings and relationships, it's without or, or border, it's why all from everywhere in the world could relate uh, to this family uh, trauma. So the uh, that big way about universality, which is of course, we could get into that much deeper, but obviously there's commonalities in virtually every culture, whether it's um, mm. based on the male, female dynamic yeah. or religion or yeah, yeah. socioeconomic pressure. So you're right, There, there's a great universality with this story. It just happens to be Iran. Um, and the my question is, what are your producers, what are your representatives doing uh, as far as getting the, the work exposed outside of this forum? Do you, do you believe that garnering some awards like you did at IDFA and maybe getting uh, nominated for an Oscar. This will help uh, get the film out into the world. Is there another strategy? What are you employing right now so people can see this unique work? Of course, my producers did a great job to promote the film because um, I put like uh, five years of work on doing this film and I was so tired, I cannot uh, stand and work work on the promotion of the film after, um, after it uh, um, screening that uh, was a very good and successful. That was a very good beginning. And then the film went in, I think, more than 70, 80 festivals and um, got a lot of uh, recognition. And it's very pleasant because after very hard years of uh, working uh, with uh, lots of problems, challenges, and and now I'm I feel that the film has finished and it's getting uh, yeah it's uh, relating very well with the audience and uh, and touch their hearts and uh, this is very pleasant. And how will you touch our hearts in the near future? Uh, is there anything you can share with us? Is there a postscript on this? Uh, is it maybe, is there a little bit more story about you? Uh, what else are you working on that, that your adoring uh, friends, family, and new audiences can look forward to? Yeah, I'm thinking uh, on a new project. Uh, again, something between fact and fiction against something with family and uh, yeah um, I think um, I really love working with the archival materials and um, so I'm writing it and I would love to work again with my Norwegian producers. Well they're they're great they're great uh, a great team uh, I've seen their work over the years. They've participated at our festival and others. 
Um, they're very committed artists. They're a fun group, but they're also very committed. Uh, yeah. I, will, I will say that Norway, I was having this discussion actually last week, I was at a big festival in Europe and we were talking about Scandinavian productions. And of course, historically, uh, the countries that have, you know, the most gravitas in recent memory were, were Sweden and Denmark. And that of yeah. course changed exponentially. They, they still produce amazing content, but I was telling this person that Norway <clears throat> is really uh, doing superior work now and even yeah. Finland to a lesser extent. And of course we're seeing more from Iceland. So I wanna congratulate our Scandinavian brothers and sisters uh, for really the, the great work that's being produced um that is appealing to more than just uh, their audiences this is really a smart strategy um it's great norway's five odd million people but you want to make sure that more people see your work so congratulations again if there's something else that you'd like to share with us um, i'm sure there's many things that we've missed but again we don't want to spoil this for any of the academy members or others in the press that may want to see and share this film with the world. If there's anything else you'd like to share with us, um, now is the time. Oh, thank you. Uh, no, I think um, it's good to um, to maintain to not uh, spoil because uh, if the um, it's just an introduction of the film, it's not a Q and A. So uh, I'm happy. Uh, that we have shared this conversation. That was very nice. And thank you for your good questions. <laughs> and I would close with thanking uh, Farooza Kosrovani. Uh, this was a seminal work in many ways. I hope that you who are watching will take the time and sit and enjoy this film. I know you'll want to share it with others. Uh, thank you again. Uh, we hope to see you and future works in addition to this work in the coming years. Thank you very much and have a nice day. You too. Thank have a nice you. evening.